Parents who host lose the most. Don't be a party to teenage drinking. It's against the law. Castor Valley is known for the tract of Eichler homes in the Greenbridge area, but not all are aware the popular builder broke ground with non-discrimination policies in an era of racial segregation. During this period, discrimination against African Americans was a legal practice that forced them to use separate toilets, drinking fountains, and also being denied many basic civil rights throughout our country. Between 1950 and 1974, Joseph Eichler's company built over 11,000 homes in nine communities in Northern California and homes in three communities in Southern California. Eichler is also noted for his resignation from the National Association of Home Builders in 1958 when the organization refused to support non-discrimination policies. Leaving New York in the mid-1960s, Yvonne Daniel and her then-husband heard about the Eichler homes and made their way to the Bay Area, settling finally in Castor Valley. Daniels tells her story to the Castor Valley TV, where she was surprised to hear that the builder's home policy was whoever had money to pay for a home could buy one. I'm Yvonne Daniel, and I live here in Castro Valley and have lived here for 48 years. And um, it surprises me to say that number because uh, so many changes have happened, and yet some things are really quite the same. Uh, first part of that that's the same is this Eichler community. Hi, I'm Monique Lombardelli. I am the executive producer of a film about Joseph Eichler called People in Glass Houses the legacy of Joseph Eichler. And what I wanted to do with this film was basically educate people on the history of these homes. And I wanted to explain why people are so passionate about them. Um, I had an experience myself where I was just driving down the street and I saw them for the first time. And it was sort of this unexplainable curiosity about these flat roof homes that I saw other people just die hard Eichler enthusiasts. So I wanted to show that and I wanted to go to each different community of them here in the Bay Area and show the different stories of these homeowners. They're all very, very different and they all have a completely different demographic, but what bonds them is the Eichler home. So we came to Castro Valley eventually via Fresno and um, Salinas County Hospital and Travis Air Force Base and we wound up in Oakland and then some a business community meeting happened at a house here in Castro Valley and my husband was invited as a new physician in the area and um, he went to this meeting and he came back saying that they were these fabulous houses and they were just so California you know we were coming from East Coast where everything is sort of vertical and uh, you know hot air rises, you try to keep all the conserve the heat in, in, in the wintertime and, and, and that's the way the architecture went. So he, he brought me out here to see this house uh, with, with, that he had been in and we found out it was a whole um, uh, group of houses and there was a, a guy selling them, you know, uh, there were three or two or three model homes that we could go through and the guy was really intent on letting us have it and, and we were just you know, so totally surprised, not expecting to get, um, first of all, anybody interested in us buying, you know, outside of a strictly uh, black area. And um, we didn't see any railroad tracks. And so it was kind of scary. But this guy, you know, sort of told us the history of the builder, who was Eichler. And um, he talked about it in terms of, look, this is an opportunity. This is a wonderful neighborhood. It's going to be very, very diverse. There's this whole section, I think, from the bottom of the hill up to my neighbor had, had already been built. And they were, had just finished this section up to um, Loman Way. And he said, they're, you know, we're taking bids on them. We're, you know, some houses are already sold. And you have an opportunity to be a part of a different kind of community. And I think that sales pitch um, resonated uh, because in those days, everybody wanted to have something that was better than their parents or better than they saw or had opportunity uh, from, you know, in their local community. And they thought if they could just get ahead in some way, that would be better for their kids. And it would be pleasant and pleasurable for 
you know, new homeowners. And um, so we we had no money, but they were they were willing to let us. You know, I, I think they saw my ex husband was a physician, so there was some uh, prestige in there, and I'm sure that's how, in part, we we were um, offered the opportunity. But but basically, everybody was allowed to, um, anybody was allowed to buy one of the houses. Joseph Eichler was the only developer allowing African Americans, Asian people, Hispanic people to even buy homes. So that to me was very, very emotional. And I think that marked innovation here. That marked what we do here in the Bay Area. Uh, equality and individuality is really important. Did you know about the segregation policies that were, that were in play with real estate? I did not know about that at that time, no. And they could not apply for a loan. Um, they couldn't even go into the homes. And the residents there, I learned, became very angry when Joe was allowing these people in and they were demanding their money back. And Joe and Ned said, you know what, if they have the money to buy it, that's it. We don't have any rules saying that they can't buy it. And if you want your money back, we're not going to give you your money back because then that, that would mean that we're doing something wrong and we're not doing anything wrong. Um, they also were trying to restrict his building. You know, he started in Sunnyvale, went all the way out to Sacramento, and then he wanted to expand to New York, so he built three homes out in New York. Um, and people were always trying to tell him, hey, you can't do this, you can't go in this area, you know, you're allowing these people to buy them, we can't do that, it's going to stir up the pot. He did it anyway, and he did it well. When we got here, I think that we were about ten, seven to ten black families. Uh, there were two Lat Latino families and maybe three or four Asian families. And the rest were um, white Americans, but they were also Europeans. You know, there were Irish families and Scottish families from the old country. And, um, uh, and then there were some, you know, Italian Americans and whatever. So it was a big, diverse group. Uh, um, about half of the, of the original owners were retirees um, from the Navy, a lot of people from the Naval Air, Air, Air Bases around here in the, in the Bay Area. So um, people had lived around the world, they had had other experiences with other people, and they were very sensitive and welcoming uh, as white people, knowing that this was a, an experiment. Um, but everybody, I guess everybody who bought it, you know, bought into the Eichler idea, and they were really happy to have a space that they could call their own that was beautiful and that they were still part of another community around them. What is most appealing about the Eichlers to you? What, what makes them so intriguing and, and appealing See, to you? See, that's what I tried to solve with this film, and I still don't have an exact answer. There are so many things. Um, I think it's a spirit. I know some people have said in lectures about mid-century modern that we as humans have sort of this homo sapien need to live outdoors. So we need to be around the trees, we need to see the sky, we need to, you know, see the grass. So the fact that there's all this glass in the back, you see the outside, maybe that's a need that we have that is satisfied here. Um, I just feel really special in them. I, I feel an artistic wave kind of come over me. It's, um, there's sort of a blank canvas for each person to do what they want to do with it. It's your artistic expression. Yeah, the community's grown. Um, the, the, there's much more um, activism on its own and there's a whole spectrum. It's not just the townies against the, the hill people. It's different you know points of view even on the hill and different points of view in Castro Valley and people are seeing people a lot more like um, the diverse world we live in but I think the experience of, of overcoming some of those fears or maybe living with some of those fears and hatreds you know and just saying look some of the people um, have learned from this experience of being here for 40 years, and so, or 20 years at that time, and then some of them haven't, and, but we're going to live in this community, and we're going to figure out how we're going to manage together. So 
the best lesson that I've drawn from this is that it's not necessary for everybody to change their mind about their politics or about what kind of people they live next door to. But it is incumbent upon us to uh, to live together and to be as gracious as we can and to treat them as neighborly as we can. And for those people that you don't like or you don't get along with or you continue to have uh, you know bump heads, you leave them alone. Leave them alone, they leave you alone. So. So we learned a lot in this experiment with, um, with Eichler Holmes. Parents who host lose the most. Don't be a party to teenage drinking. It's against the law.